What is Endstone in real life? Does Endstone have a real life counterpart, or is it just a made up material? Well, that's what we're finding out today. To figure out what Endstone is, we're gonna have to have a basic assumption that the End Islands are asteroids. It's the closest assumption and seems most accurate. The closest example to the End Islands in our solar system is the Kuiper Belt. The Kuiper Belt is a massive asteroid belt outside the planet Neptune. All of the end islands seem to be made of only one thing, endstone. Meanwhile, most asteroids are made of a whole plethora of minerals. The end islands also have a distinct yellow tint to them that's uniform throughout the whole islands. Most asteroids are either gray or brown, so we're going to have to try to find some sort of resemblance to a yellow tinted asteroid. Well, first of all, we know that endstone is inverted cobblestone as mentioned by Mojang. We also know that Endstone has many dimples. This resembles the surfaces of most asteroids. So, whatever Endstone is, it must be yellow tinted and be found on asteroids. The problem was that I couldn't find any yellow tinted asteroids that weren't extremely rare. So, we're gonna have to look for some alternatives. At first, I was tempted to think it was pumice rock. It has almost the same color and has the holes like on the actual texture, but there's one thing that stops it from being the actual endstone. It's an igneous rock, and igneous rocks are formed from volcanoes. So you might wonder, what's the problem with that? The problem with it being an igneous rock is that since it's only formed from volcanoes, and there's only limited volcanoes, they're in little supply, and since there's so much endstone in the end islands, it's unlikely a volcano could pr produce that much. To find the answer, we'll need to look in a new perspective. Surprisingly, Mojang actually gives us clues to what it is. Let me explain. In the education edition of Minecraft, they have this thing called a material reducer. The material reducer breaks down certain elements and breaks them down into their atomic components. So, what happens when you break down endstone? Well, you get 59 silicon, 13 carbon, and 28 of a mysterious element. This roughly translates into 4 silicon, 1 carbon, and 2 of the mysterious element. 4 silicon and 1 carbon would be a tetrasilicon monocarbon. We're getting closer to the answer now. But what about these two mysterious elements? What could they be? Well, in a previous video I made discussing what redstone is in real life, I came to the conclusion that there was no real life counterpart because it has mysterious qualities that don't match in real life. But now, with the material reducer, if you put one redstone ore in there, you get uranium and carbon and a mysterious element. Now, when you hear that redstone has uranium, that might seriously alarm you. After all, uranium is dangerous and nuclear, right? But actually, touching uranium is fine in its basic form. It's the nuclear waste that people mistake it for. So, what does this have to do with endstone, you might ask? So, I think the mysterious element gives some blocks, like redstone and endstone, its magical properties. Maybe the magic properties protect it against the ender dragon, so that's why it doesn't break. So here is what the endstone molecule will look like. As you can see, it has triple bonds, which makes it really strong. Explain why endstone has a high blast resistance. So what is endstone in real life? Drum roll please. It's carborundum. Even though it has a different color, it does have a similar molecular structure. So you can tell your friends, the endstone is carborundum. But before you go, please consider subscribing.